Hi, this video is about the Caribou Mathematics Contest. I'm going to show the solution for the February 2016 Grade 9-10 Contest Question 20, which also came up in the Grade 11-12 Contest. So the question is, the point P is located in the interior of a rectangle such that the distance of P from a corner of the rectangle is 5 centimeters, from the opposite corner is 14 centimeters, and from a third corner is 10 centimeters. What is the distance of P from the fourth corner? Okay, so what we have drawn here is this rectangle with this point P, which is inside of the rectangle, and we know that from the question that one of the lengths from the point P to a corner must be 5 centimeters. Now this isn't to scale, so we will just call this length here 5, and the opposite length which is from the point to the opposite corner must be 14 and from the point P to a third corner which we will just use as this one here this length will be 10 or 10 centimeters so what we want to know is this length here which is the length from this point P to the fourth corner okay now, in geometry problems, it's normal to draw extra lines and circles and to look for relations that may help solve the problem. So, in our case, I will be drawing two extra lines, which will be going through the point P and will be parallel to the sides of the rectangle. Okay, now the purpose of drawing these two extra parallel lines is to have two line segments or the two lengths of line segments that are the same. So here, this, the length of this line segment is the same as the length of, that's equal to the length of this line segment. So if we want to call the length of this line segment here A, well, then we can also call the length of this line segment up here A. And likewise, for this line, this line segment, if we want to call the length of that line segment B, well, then again, we can call the length of this line segment up here also B. And this can also be applied to the other sides. So here C and C, and up here D, and here D. Okay, now we know a rectangle has four corners that are all 90 degree, or they're all right angles. So here, 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 here. Now we know that since this line is parallel to this line, we know that these angles, they must be right angles. And not only here, but also of course here. And again, similarly, for this line, since this line is parallel to the top, it also must have the right angles. Alright, now if we look, we can see there we have a lot of triangles. And since they all have a right angle in them, we can see that all these triangles are right triangles inside of the rectangle which means that we can now use the Pythagorean theorem and create some relations. Now, if you don't know already, the Pythagorean theorem states that in any right triangle, the length or the square of the length of the line that is opposite to the right angle, that is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two lengths in the triangle. Okay. Well, let's start with this triangle here. We know the hypotenuse, or the, the line, the length that is opposite to the right angle is 5. So therefore, 5 squared must be equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. So 
This side is a, so a squared. And then we would have plus the square of this side. And we know that this length is just c. So we have plus c squared. OK, and now let's look at this triangle here. Again, this, the hypotenuse is 14. So 14 squared is equal to, and then we have b squared plus then this length squared, which we know is d, so plus d squared. Okay, now let's look at this triangle. We know the hypotenuse is 10, so 10 squared is equal to, then we have a, so a squared, plus, and then this length squared, which we know is d, so plus d squared. And finally, now we will call this length that we want to know, what we want to find out, as e. Okay, so we know that e is the hypotenuse, as it is the opposite line to the right angle, so we will have e squared, which is equal to, and then we have, what we have is, well, for this triangle, we have b, so b squared, plus this length squared, which we know is c, so plus c squared. Okay, so now there are two different ways to solve this. Now, for the first way, what we could do is we could eliminate b squared by using this line here and writing it in terms of d squared, and then we could eliminate c squared by using this line up here and writing it in terms of a squared and then evaluating this by using this line here. But there is an equivalent and more elegant way of solving this. Okay, and I will show this now. And what this is, is we will draw a line which will separate the top two relations and the bottom two relations. Now, let's look at the right sides of the top two relations. Now, if we add up the right sides of the top two relations, we get a squared plus b squared plus c squared plus d squared. And likewise, similarly, if we add up the right sides of the bottom two relations, we also get a squared plus b squared plus c squared plus d squared. Well, what this tells us is that if we add up the right sides of the top two relations, and that equals the right sides of the bottom two relations, well then, what that means is that if we add up the left sides of the top two relations, so 5 squared plus 14 squared, this must be equal to the left sides, the sum of the left sides of the bottom two relations. So this is equal to 10 squared plus e squared. Okay. Now, the generalized version of this relation states that for any point, so for any point in any rectangle, the sum of the square, the sum of the squares of the distances from that point that are going to opposite corners, that must be equal to the sum of the squares of the other two distances that are going in from that point to the other opposite, the two opposite corners. So in our example, that would mean that this, this square plus this square must be equal to this square plus this square, and that is exactly what we have shown. All right, now since we wanted e, we can now isolate for e squared. So what we will have is e squared, and e squared will be equal to, well, the 5 squared we know is just 25, and 14 squared is 196, and then we would have, bringing this 10 squared on the left side, we would have to subtract 10 squared. So 10 squared is 100, so we are then subtracting 100. Well, 
we still have e squared is equal to. If we were just subtracting 100, we, we can just take this 100 away from 196, which leaves us with 25 plus 96, and this is equal to 121. And what this gives us, and we know that 121, the square root of that is, it's also known as 11 squared, so, from this we can say if e squared is 11 squared, e is equal to 11. So the answer is 11, which would be option C. So option C, 11. Now the key to solving this problem was thinking about drawing these two extra parallel lines, as we did here. If you'd like to know more about this contest, please feel free to visit our website at caributests.com.